I approach every Notion workspace with a core tenant, and in its simplest terms, that is to use databases, not standalone pages. And among numerous benefits, this strategy optimizes your workspace for the API, which allows Notion to integrate with other services. So I'm going to overview my core strategy, the API, and how they'll work together. And of course, I'll have many more resources to come, so be sure to subscribe on Notion.VIP and YouTube. So this foremost strategy of using databases over pages is the crux of my widely employed bulletproof framework and therefore it's known as the bulletproof principle and aside from supporting the API this database centric approach it keeps your information accurate and consistent it minimizes redundancy and vulnerability to human error it automates contextual filters it allows you to summarize information and derive useful insights it retains your ability to scale and migrate your content and it leverages Notion's most distinctive advantage, which is its union of databases and documents. So I dive deeper into many of these benefits in my recent post about relations and rollups, and I'll link to that post within the YouTube video description. So you can remember the bulletproof principle with the acronym COMMAND and ACT, which stands for centralize in master databases and then access from contextual templates. And I detail this approach in my walkthrough of the bulletproof workspace, which I'll also link to within the video description. But the gist is that at the top of your page hierarchy is a headquarters page. And at the bottom of that page, subtly tucked into an admin toggle is a page called master databases. And this master databases page centralizes all of the information for your workspace within master databases, such as a master projects database, an organization's database, a resources database, and an objectives database. And these databases are interrelated using Notion's relation property. So each task is going to be related to a project. Each person is related to an organization. Each key result is related to an objective. And then each individual expense will be related to an expense category. But you rarely access this master databases page directly and instead you access all of your workspace information through linked databases, which are linked instances of your master databases that are filtered and formatted for various contexts. So linked databases within your headquarters page offer a high-level snapshot of the activity in your workspace, such as the active projects, upcoming tasks, and recent meetings. And then linked databases also exist within each other. So you can open up any database item to see related items from other master databases. So for example, you can open up any project and within that project, you can see filtered views of tasks, resources, meetings, and so forth, displaying only the items that are related to this particular project. And these databases within databases populate automatically from pre-configured templates that utilize self-referencing filters. So for any new project that hasn't yet been populated, you can click on the project template and it's going to populate automatically with those linked databases automatically filtered for the new project, displaying only the items that are related to that project. So some other common examples of these sorts of contextual dashboards include areas, which are the high-level categories of your life or work. And within those areas, you can view projects, tasks, meetings, and resources. Within clients, you can view their employees, their projects, tasks, meetings, and resources. And within quarters, you can view all the items you're tracking by quarter, such as objectives and expenses. So what is this Notion API? Well, rolling out incrementally, the API allows Notion to interact with other services, such as calendars, email services, CRMs, reporting tools, communications platforms, accounting software, 
website content management systems, e-commerce services, membership platforms, and virtual assistance. And what that means is that you can create automation, such as syncing an events database with Google and Outlook calendars, and you can maintain an integrated unified contact list. You can personalize bulk emails sent through email marketing services like MailChimp. You can collect form submissions within your Notion databases. You can aggregate and visualize reporting metrics. You can send Notion content to Slack channels in a way that's far more useful than that legacy Slack integration. You can sync QuickBooks and FreshBooks with databases of invoices and expenses. You can maintain your website's content from a Notion database. You can sync your Shopify and Gumroad orders within Notion. You can sync members from MemberSpace and Memberful within a database of members in Notion. And you can update Notion databases from virtual assistants like Alexa and Google Assistant. So a growing number of services use Notion's API to create official integrations, and you can choose those services directly within Notion, and then conversely, you can choose Notion within those services. But additionally, users can use tools like Zapier to create custom integration. And I'm actually in the process of guest posting to Zapier's blog. I'm posting a series of posts in conjunction with the official Notion integration. And the first one is already live. I'll include that within the video description and there will be more to come. But what these services like Zapier allow you to do is to connect Notion to other apps that don't necessarily have official integrations. And when you make these connections, you define triggers and actions. In other words, you say, if this, then that. So for example, if a task is completed, then reschedule it. If a prospect enters a sales stage, then send a text message. If a content database is updated, then update the website. If it's the first day of the month, then email a report to stakeholders. So the constant in all of these examples of using Notion's API is databases, or more specifically, database properties. A synced calendar event is gonna exchange the title, date, time, description, and so forth. A synced contact exchanges first name, last name, email address, phone number, birthday, and other characteristics. A mass email that's sent using an email service provider is going to include the message, the email address, and then personalization variables such as the first name of each individual recipient. And then imported e-commerce orders will include the order ID, the customer name, the customer address, the email address, products, subtotal, tax, shipping costs, total costs, and so forth. And that's how the API works most often and most seamlessly. It links properties from your Notion databases to values and other services. So by upholding the bulletproof principle and thus using databases for all of your content, you'll optimize your workspace to leverage every integration facilitated by Notion's API. And those capabilities will expand over time, but your commitment to the framework will ensure your ability to implement each new opportunity. So like I said, I'll be publishing many more resources related to Notion's API. And if you encounter any obstacles as you implement the new integrations, feel free to tweet at William Nutt.